guys, what's up? I'm Dr. Inky, your digital skin doctor, and welcome to SkinFix, the platform whereby we compare different types of skincare and give you the breakdown of what's good and what's not so great about the skincare. Now, in today's video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison. Now, for those joining us for the first time, a head-to-head -head comparison is whereby we take two popular skincare and then compare them both together to see which one comes out on top. Now, in today's video, we'll be comparing two different hybrid sunscreen. One from USA, Alpha MD's sunscreen, versus one from Japan, Nisa sunscreen. They're both hybrid, so we're gonna see which one performs much better. Let's get ready to rumble! First up, we'll be talking about Elta MD's Broad Spectrum UV Protection. This is um, SPF 45 with a PA3+. Who or what is it suitable? Who is suitable to actually use this particular sunscreen? Now, this particular sunscreen is written here that it's oil-free. Generally, oil-free sunscreens means that it does not contain any form of essential oil or any sort of mineral oil. Oil-free sunscreen, it is usually formulated and suitable for someone who is acne prone skin or someone with oily skin whereby if you actually uh, regularly get blackheads, whiteheads or acne vulgaris you should use an oil free sunscreen now next up is also stated that it's lightweight but we tried it out later and then it is transparent zinc oxide. It means once you apply, the zinc oxide should disappear, right? Should blend into your skin's color. It means that white cast should be at its minimal. And on top of that, it has a UVA and UVB protection. Now, on its ingredient list, it has tons of ingredients, but let's break down the more active ingredients. It has only three main active ingredients that you should um, look at. The first active ingredient is definitely the sun protection active ingredients it contains zinc oxide. Now, the amount of zinc oxide contained in Elta MD's Broad Spectrum UV is actually close to 9%. That means 9% of this entire tube here, and this is roughly about 85 grams. So generally about 9% or up to 9 grams of this particular sunscreen consists of zinc oxide. Now, the zinc oxide is actually a physical blocker. And what physical blockers do is actually reflect uh, UV radiation, which is generating UVA and UVB away from your skin. Now, the reason why it's a hybrid sunscreen because it contains a chemical portion to the sun protection. Now, it contains octinoxate. According to this description, it contains about 7.5% octinoxate, and octinoxate protects against UVB. On top of that, there is a third active ingredient, which is tocopherol, or otherwise known as vitamin E. Vitamin E's function is actually to repair the skin and at the same time, it's an antioxidant. It means that it gives your skin a better protection against UV radiation. Perfect for those with sensitive skin and even for those with acne-prone skin. Let's look at its packaging first. It comes in a 85 gram bottle and it retails for roughly about 130 ringgit, which is about 16 to 20 US dollars. It's not too bad of a pricing for something so large. Now, let's have a look at what's inside. So let's have a look at the sunscreen itself. Now, texture-wise, it's a little bit thicker than most sunscreens. And as we spread it around, now it doesn't have that oily sensation, hence the all free. However, what I've noticed is its white cast is actually very, very thick. So it claims on a bottle that it has transparent zinc oxide. So let's try and just Wipe it. Spread it more evenly. Now for someone like myself, who, if, who has a little bit of tan skin, and after application of this particular sunscreen, the white cast is still there. Even though it did mention on, on its packaging that it has a transparent zinc oxide, but as we know, zinc oxides are rarely transparent. They do have that heavy white cast sensation. Now, it's not as lightweight as I hope that it, it will be. So, it does feel a little bit heavy on the skin as well. However, because it is a little bit heavy on the skin, it does not actually smudge so easily. It does not actually get onto your, your clothes or your makeup. But this white cast is a little bit thick. Hey guys, do you know it's difficult to actually get Elta MD sunscreen in Southeast Asia? Let me know in the comments which website they can actually buy this sunscreen from. Now, let's head over the rating system first. Now, for smell, now, I like the fact that it doesn't contain any fragrance, all right? So, for smell, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Now, for texture, 
plus points for being oil free. However, I'm going to deduct some points because it doesn't feel as lightweight as it claims on the bottle. So I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Now for price, it's not the most expensive sunscreen that I've seen. It's not the cheaper sunscreen that I've seen. So I'm going to give it a mid-tier rating of a 3 out of 5 because it retails somewhere between 16 to 20 US dollars, which is roughly about 120 to 150 ringgit Malaysian. But what's more important is the effectiveness. Now this is an SPF 45, very close to SPF 50. So I think SPF 45 is actually generally sufficient if you're living in an equatorial country like Malaysia or in Southeast Asia, and the fact that it has both UVA and UVB protection. And the fact that it's a hybrid sunscreen with a UVA and a UVB protection makes its effectiveness five out of five. So overall, the rating I'm gonna give the Elta MD's UV Shield Broad Spectrum SPF 45 PA3 Plus is a 4 out of 5 stars. Hey guys, next sunscreen that we'll be comparing with Hales from Japan. This is the Anisa sunscreen. This is the Perfect UV Sunscreen Skin Care Milk SPF 50 PA4 Plus. Alright, first up, let's break down the active ingredients. Now, it contains a few different active ingredients. So, first of all, it's, it is a hybrid sunscreen. That means that it contains both physical blockers and chemical blockers. Now, for physical blockers, it contains both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. For those who are unsure about the difference between the zinc oxide and the titanium dioxide, generally, zinc oxide is a better physical blocker, but it is heavy in the white cast, which is that whitish discoloration, which we saw in Elta MD. So hence, we mix it a little bit with titanium dioxide to reduce the amount of white cast that you actually see. Now, physical blockers are really important because it reflects away UVA and UVB radiation. Now, as for the hybrid part, it contains the chemical portion. Now, the chemical portion of the sunscreen contains many different ingredients. And just like the Elta MD's sunscreen, they, they, they also contain tocopherol, which is vitamin E to help protect your skin against UV rays. Now, what's interesting is this particular sunscreen also contains a few more other active ingredients, one of which is green tea extract. Now, for those who do not know, green tea extract or green tea itself hails from East Asia. And green tea has been well-researched and it shows that it's also a very powerful antioxidant. It means it protects your skin against UV rays, against aging effects of toxins all around you, and at the same time, it helps boost collagen production. And next up, it also contains glycerin. Now, glycerin is a form of a hydrator, an underrated ingredient to help hydrate your skin. Glycerin is also very effective to hold together the physical and the chemical blockers for the sunscreen. Now, enough of the details of the sunscreen, let's have a look at the physical properties of this sunscreen. Now, first up, it comes in a nice bottle is 60 ml. Now, it's easy to carry because it's small. You can put it in your handbags or you can put it in your gym bags. Next up, let's have a look at this texture. Now, this particular sunscreen, it has a more milky-like texture, as you can see. So, it spreads it spreads pretty easily and it has a, an oily-like texture. It means that this particular sunscreen is suitable for someone with normal skin, to dehydrated skin. However, if you're someone with acne prone skin or maybe combination skin, you might want to skip this particular sunscreen because it might actually clog your pores. Now, I have to say that the sunscreen contains some sort of, of a fragrance, so it's, it's not overpowering, but there is fragrance in it. But what I like about this particular sunscreen is after application, it has that nice shiny look and the white cast is actually at its minimal. Now, on this hand, we have the Elta MD and this application after about 10 minutes, and you can see the difference between both. Elta MD, Anissa. All right, now that we're done testing out the Anissa sunscreen, let's rate it. Now, in terms of smell, it has fragrance. I'm not a big fan of fragrance, so I'm gonna give it a two out of five. Now, for texture, I really like this texture. Even though it's slightly oily, it's actually easy to spread on your skin. And then it doesn't really leave that much of a white cast. So for texture, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Now for price, it is also mid-tier, just like Elta MD. It is roughly about 15 to 20 US dollars, roughly about 100 ringgit to 150 ringgit. So I'm gonna give it a mid-tier rating, three out of five. Now in terms of effectiveness, it not only contains physical blockers and chemical blockers for sunscreen, it also contains antioxidants like vitamin E and green tea extract. So for effectiveness, I'm gonna give it a five out of five stars. And the fact that it's also SPF 50 and PA4+, which gives you its maximum protection. So overall rating, it is a three and a half stars out of five. And the winner is, drum roll, it's the Elta MD's Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. Now the 
fact that it's a hybrid sunscreen, both for UVA and UVB, and the plus points is that it's oil-free. That means if you're someone who's suffering from blackheads, whiteheads, or clogged pores very often, you should definitely get this sunscreen. Do not let the price put you off because you're actually getting a lot of sunscreen in it. It's roughly about 85 grams of sunscreen. However, due to its white class, you might want to spread the sunscreen a little bit more thinner on your skin and probably reapply it every two to three hours. All right, guys, it's the end of the video. Let me know in the comments if you have used either the Alpha MD sunscreen or the Anissa sunscreen, and let me know your thoughts on this particular video. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends, especially those struggling to look for the proper sunscreen. And don't forget to turn on the bell button because we release new videos on a weekly basis. Now, that's it from me. I'm Dr. Inky, your digital skin doctor. And remember to always stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay informed. Are you tired of wasting time and money on your skin, but nothing works? We are here to help. SkinFix is a platform that provides personal care education completely free. SkinFix is run by skin doctors and skincare experts. You can chat and consult with our skin doctors without ever leaving your home. Other than free advice, SkinFix also provides tailor-made solutions for your skin problem with customized medical-grade skincare delivered right to your doorstep. SkinFix, your digital skin doctor.